Hi there! This tutorial will show you how to make a use case diagram in UML. If you're new to UML, check out our video, What is UML? linked in the upper right to learn more about diagramming and the unified modeling language in general. A use case diagram is a simple visual way to show how people or actors interact with a system or an application. Creating a use case diagram like this one is helpful for showing how a system is expected to interact with its users. By making a use case diagram before you start building your system, you can define the scope of your project and make sure you have a plan for all the requirements in the system you're building. It's high level enough that you can also explain your project to non-technical people in your organization, like executives, marketing teams, and more. In this tutorial, we're using Gliffy, which is an easy to use app available in Confluence, Jira, and online. You can learn more about Gliffy through the info linked in the upper right, or you can find a link to start a free trial in our video description. Once you've started a free trial, following along with this tutorial will be super easy. So, this is an example of a use case diagram that shows how the phone and internet systems at a city government office work. You can see multiple users or actors represented with these stick figures and how they interact with systems, which are represented by these rectangles. Within each of those rectangles, you can see the use cases or the ways that the system performs for the actor. So in this case, a city employee logs into their workstation and they have access to local apps, email, the web browser, the phone, and more. This use case diagram is helpful because it clearly defines what that workstation needs to provide for the city employee and what other systems that workstation will need to interact with in order to provide those use cases. This example is one of Gliffy's use case diagram templates. You can check out all our templates by going to File, New, selecting Create from a Template, and then scrolling through here to find the UML folder and clicking Use Case Diagrams. We have a few that you can start out with. Now, let's say you want to make a use case diagram from scratch. I'm going to hit Cancel here. There are a few ways you can get started. First, you can go to File, New, and select UML and ERD here. That will pre-populate all the shapes you need to make UML and ERD diagrams. Or you can click this More Shapes button to make sure that software design is checked, which includes all your UML diagram notations. I'm going to hit OK. And here I'm going to open up our use case shapes. So first things first, you'll want to draw out a rectangle for the system you want to describe and put the name of that system at the top. So I'm just dragging and dropping. For our example, I'm going to say we're making an application for one of those digital kiosks at a fast food restaurant. So I'm going to say order kiosk. I'm going to make this larger so we have plenty of room. Then you want to consider your actors, which is whoever will use this system. It's easiest to think of an actor as a human user, but actors can also be external devices or systems as well. I'm going to drag and drop out this stick figure actor symbol right here and label our first one restaurant guest. So we'll also want to include the fast food restaurant staff who are going to need to see what comes into this order kiosk so that they can actually make it. So I'm going to say restaurant. And this is multiple users. You can refer to them in the collective and say restaurant. I'm going to edit this just to make it clearer and say guest as well. Now there's a nuance here. Because the restaurant actor is reacting to how the guest uses the order kiosk, they need to go on this side of the system. And what that shows is that the guest, the primary actor, is the one that initiates using the system and the restaurant staff is there to respond to the system. Now it's time to start dragging and dropping ovals to represent our use cases in this system. Let's say that there are a couple key actions that this order kiosk does and the restaurant and its guests will need to interact with. It's a good idea to make sure your use case titles are action oriented and descriptive with actions that occur first or most frequently at the top then working your way down from there. So for our order kiosk at a restaurant, I'm going to start with create order because that would be the first thing that someone does. But say I also want to include functionality for them to modify their order or even cancel their order. 
I'm just typing to rename these shapes. And last within the system, I want them to be able to pay me. So I'm going to say make payment as well. These are all use cases. So they're things that can happen within the system that the actors will interact with. Last, we'll draw in the relationships between our actors and use cases. So there are a few different types of lines here to work with, and we'll explain those briefly. First, solid lines indicate an association, which is the most basic type of interaction. So we know that our guest is going to be able to create an order. We know that they'll be able to modify their order. We know that they'll be able to cancel their order. And we know that they'll be able to make a payment. This is the most basic type of interaction. They're just doing it. The restaurant staff over here, however, might not interact with all of these. For example, if the restaurant guest cancels their order, the staff doesn't necessarily need to know about it, especially if they haven't started making it yet. But let's get a little bit more detailed. I'm going to drag out this box so we have room for that extra detail, and I'll move our restaurant staff over here. And I'll nudge these over as well to give me some more room. Sometimes restaurants could run out of a certain meal or ingredient so they can't complete an order as planned. So let's say that there's a confirm order that follows our create order use case. And when it comes to paying, someone might want to pay with a gift card. Or they want to pay with a credit card. And maybe you want to accommodate people who have cash as well, so you add a pay at counter option. So you can already see that making a use case diagram is a great way to explore all the functionality you'll need to build into a system and make sure that your project has the appropriate scope. So looking at all these new use cases, not all of these are directly interacted with by the guest. Let's take payments, for example. The base use case here is making a system, but one of these three options has to happen in order for that base use case to be complete. Each option can happen sometimes, not always, and one of them needs to happen. So that means that this make payment option here is actually a generalization of these other options. So to represent that, we'll drag out this arrow that has the hollow end and call it a generalization. And we're going to point it back to our base use case and say that all three of these are generalizations of making a payment. I'm just going to tidy this up real quick. All right, that looks good. One other relationship to keep in mind is called the included use case. So let's look at create order and confirm order. Every time an order is created or modified, we want the restaurant to confirm that the order will be made. Because that happens every single time, it's called an included use case. So when create order happens, we will include confirming the order. And when modifying the order happens, we will include modifying the order. In addition to that included use case, there's also an arrow over here called the extended use case. And extended use cases are for when something happens sometimes, but not all the time. So when you create an order, the restaurant will always confirm the order. If the restaurant only sometimes confirmed the order, we would call that an extended use case. And the arrow would point back to the base use case of create order. So I'm going to go ahead and draw in a few last association arrows here. Because they will confirm the order and they will interact if they pay at the counter. I'm going to click on this shape and click bring to front up here. You can also hit command or control F to pop it up to the front. Great, so this is a great start at a basic use case diagram. Once you have the structure of this diagram done, you can 
Click on a shape and click this Edit Shape Properties menu to change its appearance. So say I had an existing order kiosk system, and that's what I just diagrammed, but I want to add the functionality to pay with a gift card. I might want to make that green just to call attention to it so that when you share this use case diagram with someone else, say a executive who needs to understand what your team is working on, they can see easily how it fits into the whole system and it kind of calls it out quickly. That's everything you need to know to get started making use case diagrams in UML. Remember to keep it simple enough that your viewer can quickly understand the system, but include enough details to provide a helpful description. When you're done, be sure to save and share your diagram, and you can add links to your diagram in other popular tools like Slack, Trello, and more, so you can quickly get feedback on your use case diagram. If you haven't yet, be sure to sign up for a free trial of Gliffy via the link in this video description, or check out more of our tutorial videos. In addition to UML use case diagrams, there are tons of other UML templates and more video tutorials to check out. Happy diagramming!